a new video. So in my previous videos, uh, we have covered with the, the module three. Actually, that that was the first chapter of module three. Uh, that was CMOS process technology. So in that, uh, mostly all of the concepts we have tried to cover it okay, in the five videos. So go and watch it. So this is the second chapter, uh, which comes out of module three only. That is circuit characterization and performance estimation. Okay. So in the CMOS process technology, we have just uh, uh, we have just seen the complete process outlook of the CMOS implementation just by, uh, by uh, uh, analyzing what at all is there inside the transistors and we have analyzed it. But here, now we are going to check the circuit characterization. So now the CMOS circuit analysis is going to be done, okay, and the performance. So based on the circuit, uh, the characteristics of the circuit, the performance would be estimated with respect to the rise time fall time, delay time and we are going to see the different types of estimations that is uh, resistance estimation. In resistance estimation we are going to check the uh, value of uh, resistance which is a minimum value of resistance which is required for the uh, circuit to be performing in a better way. Okay. Also we have capacitance estimation that is one important concept where in that under that capacitance estimation we have different kinds of capacitances and we are going to see all of them in detail. Okay. So this was the brief uh, introduction about this, this uh, topic, circuit characterization and performance estimation. So a lot of things are there to discuss. So I'm going to make around four to five videos in uh, with this chapter. Okay. After that, uh, the module three would be concluded. Okay. So this was about circuit characterization and performance estimation. So introduction and more structure is created by superimposing multiple layers of conducting, insulating, and transistor forming materials. A conventional silicon gate MOS device consists of a gate forming region and a source drain forming region which includes diffusion, polysilicon and metal layer separated by the insulating layer. So these things already we have discussed in our process technology. Each of these layers exhibits resistance and capacitance which are fundamental in determining the performance of a circuit or a system. So the resistance and capacitance play a vital role in any of the circuit. Okay, it need not be any, it need not be only the CMOS circuits. In any other circuits, the, the resistance and capacitances play a vital role. Okay, so now we are discussing with respect to the circuit characterization under CMOS implementation. So uh, these layers exhibit the resistance and capacitance which are fundamental, which are used to determine the performance. Here we will focus on developing simple models to analyze system behavior to estimate key performance metrics such as signal delays, okay, that I've already told you the rise time, fall time, delay time and power dissipation, okay. So this is also an important concept. These models help in understanding the design and optimization of MOS circuits. The key areas to be considered are resistance and capacitance calculation, delay estimations, determination of conductor size of power clock distribution, power consumption. So these are the key concepts which are going to over, overview. Then we have charge storage mechanism. So first let us see with the resistance estimation. Okay. So what do you mean by this resistance estimation is? So the resistance estimation mainly deals with the, uh, the component which you are using for the particular implementation of any CMOS circuit. Okay. So the, for one particular component, the resistance would be varying, but for other, for any other component, the resistance won't be remaining constant. The resistance would be variable. But here in this case of CMOS, we have one fixed resistance in order to in, avoid this problem that is called as sheet resistance. Okay. So the resistance R of a uniform slab of conducting material is given by R is equal to rho. This rho is the conductivity. Okay or we could be calling uh, rho as the resistivity. So in case of uh, sheet resistance, we could be calling rho as the resistivity, rho by T into L by W, okay, where rho is the resistivity, T is the thickness, L is the conductor length and W is the conductor width. So we know that resistor is given in terms of ohms. So this equation can be rewritten using sheet resistance RS measured in ohms, ohms per square. That is R is equal to RS into L by W ohms. Okay. So that RS is the sheet resistance. So thus the resistance of a thin conducting layer can be calculated by multiplying the sheet resistance RS by the length to width ratio of the conductor. 
okay so whatever the sheet resistance would be of that resistance if you if you multiply it by the length and width of the conductor we would be getting our final resistance okay so we could see the uh, uh, following figure which consists of a width length and the thickness okay so this first figure shows the sheet, uh, complete sheet resistance with the following width length and the thickness okay so this is the second figure where it is getting divided or it is getting put into pieces that is uh, this one sheet is divided into four pieces so that's why we have width here length here and the thickness of the sheet okay so sheet resistance then we have for smaller conductor the equation is given by r is equal to rs into l by w it remains the same but for bigger conductor r is equal to rs into 4l by 4w okay for bigger conductor means you know if you want to increase the length and width of the conductor you could be multiplying it by some constant values so here in this case they have mentioned it as 4 okay if we cancel it 4 4 again it would be remaining the same that is rs into l by w for bigger conductor bigger conductor means just increasing the width and length that's it so this illustrate show different conductor geometries can have the same resistance if their length to width ratios are equivalent so this demonstrate the utility of the sheet resistance in simplifying the resistance calculation okay so next we have the typical sheet resistance values so the table below presents typical sheet resistances for materials used in 3 micron technology and 5 micron technology so this table you see here material is metal that is aluminium so minimum ohm that minimum resistance per square that is 0 0.03 typically it is 0 0.05 and maximum it is 0 0.08 for silicides it is 2, 3 and 6. For diffusion N plus and P plus it is 10, 25 and 50. And for polysilicon it is 15, 50 and 100. Okay. So for metals the resistivity is primarily determined by material properties. However the polysilicon and diffusion layers the resistivity varies based on the doping concentration introduced during the implantation. So for polysilicon and diffusion layers. So diffusion layers is a, are also called as thinox layers. Okay. So uh, during our process technology part, we have seen that uh, when the diffusion layer crosses over the polysilicon layer, the transistor is formed, right? So now in this case, the diffusion and polysilicon layer, since they are getting overlapped, their resistance are also of the higher value that is more than 10 ohms. Okay. So you see here for diffusion as well as polysilicon, the range minimum is uh, starts from 10, 25, 50 and it ranges up to 100 ohm, right? So the, the maximum resistance values value has to be taken since these two layers are getting overlapped. So that's why in order to have the better conductivity in the circuit implementation, we should be taking the maximum resistor values as shown in this table, okay? So the accurate resistance estimation requires knowledge of process parameters, okay? So now let us see channel resistance in MOS transistors. Although the voltage current characteristics of the approximate channel resistance can be used for uh, the channel resistance in the linear region that is they have given as RC that is equal to K into L by W. Okay. For both N channel and B channel MOSFETs K typically ranges from so K is a constant value and it typically ranges from 5000 to 30,000 ohms per square. Okay. So the above equation shows the channel resistance shows that the channel resistance depend on the surface mobility. So here the mobility would be taking a place of the majority carriers that is electrons in NMOS and holes in PMOS. Since mobility is a temperature dependent parameter. So since it's mainly dependent on temperature, the channel resistance and the channel resistance and consequently switching time and power dissipation vary with temperature okay so this power dissipation and switching time would be varying along with the temperature since mobility is a temperature dependent parameter okay for because the mobility equation depends on the temperature as well as time time permitted so the resistance increases by approximately plus 0.25 percent per de degree celsius above 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. So these are resistance in uh, non rectangular regions. In VLSI layouts, conducting paths often take non rectangular shapes such as bends or junctions. So the resistance of such regions, uh, regions is more complex to calculate than for the simple rectangles. A common approach is to divide a complex shape into simpler rectangular sections and calculate resistance accordingly. 
So here this figure below shows the standard resistance values for commonly encountered VLSI layout shapes. So these figures you could see here uh, in uh, VLSI layouts, the non-rectangular shapes here. So here these this shape is a rectangular shape which has one common constant length as well as width. So resistance R is given by L by W. Okay. But here in this case, again, this is of a shape or uh, this is not of a uh, non, this is a basic non-rectangular shape. But the resistance still remains the same because it has the constant length and width. You see here the width of both the sides remain the same. Also the length of both sides remain the same. So that's why again it is given by L by W. But now in these two figures you see here, we have different values of length and width in both the sides. Okay. So here the this is W1 which has a different width and here W2 has a different width. Here L1 has a different width and here L2 has a different length. Okay. So here the length and width would be getting varied. So that's why we have the if we have the change in the resistance value as well. So based on the length and width in VLSI layouts, a common approach is taken by uh, calculating the width and length for the different different shapes. Okay. These values serve as useful approximations while designing complex circuits. Okay. Figure below illustrate practical lay layout geometries. Okay. So these are the practical layout geometries for uh, non-rectangular shapes you see here these four figures if you see very carefully okay they have given along with the ratios width uh, width analysis they have done okay so just uh, check check these figures okay so if you this is just for your understanding okay uh, no much deeper explanation is required for this just observe all these figures very carefully so these shapes often require careful estimation of resistance due to their irregular dimensions Table below presents resistance values for commonly encountered layout shapes. Okay, so for uh, different shapes, the different values are there. So this table, I guess, it's uh, not required. So contact and wire resistance. Contacts and wires also introduce resi resistance, which increases as their size decreases. So these typical values for modern processors range from 0 0.25 ohm to 100 ohm. Careful design is required to minimize to minimize resistance and ensure proper signal transmission. So uh, uh, these are some key points under resistance at estimation which you have discussed. So let us see the key takeaways now. That is uh, which you have studied till now. Resistance calculation. Okay, for rectangular conductors, it is R is equal to R S into L by W. For MOSFET channels, it is R G is equal to K into L by W, where K ranges from 5000 to 30,000 ohms per square. That also we have seen. Next, we have process dependency. So metal resistance is fixed while diffusion and polysilicon resistance depend on doping concentration. Channel resistance varies with respect to temperature. This also we have discussed. Non-rectangular resistance. Okay. Then contacts and wires. So these are the things which have discussed under resistance estimation. So in the next video, we are going to discuss with the very important concept. Okay. Where uh, I'm going to make minimum of two videos under the capacitance estimation okay so that we'll see in the next video so that's all for this video guys uh, please like share subscribe to our channel and the notes would be available in the uh, video of uh, description go and uh, access it okay and uh, keep supporting us guys comment down your opinions and please like this video okay your like would be very very essential for us so that's all guys thank you